Number 56. What can you say about two charges Q1 and Q2 if the electric field one fourth of the way from Q1 to Q2 is zero? All right. So basically, here's a little uh, picture I have shown that's trying to depict what's going on. We have two charges. They're both going to, well, they're both going to be equal. <laughs> so how do we know that they're both, um, well, equal charges, not equal in magnitude. Equal charges, what I meant. So the same charge. I shouldn't probably have used the word equal. Anyway, uh, let's say I chose this particular point between the two. And if this charge is positive and this charge is positive, then I know the electric field at this red point produced by Q1 will be pointing to the right because po the, for the positive charges, they, the lines point away. And then for this positive charge, the electric field line at this particular point will be pointing in the opposite direction, right? So we have that kind of setup where the vectors are opposing one another. So we can already, and, and which would, which is good, right? We need that to be the case because they told us that the electric field, we got to do something where the electric field is zero. They cannot be opposite. If they were opposite in charges, then they would reinforce one another. This would be the vector uh, produced by the positive charge, and then this would be the vector produced by the negative charge because the uh, electric field lines point towards the negative charge. So it can't be that. So they got to be the same. Okay, that's the first thing. Now, uh, knowing that they didn't give us any numbers, basically, we know we either got a set of ratios or we have to start with a very, very simple idea. Okay? So please check out number 55. All right, it's the one we just did, and that one should give you some intuition about how to approach this. So they told us, they told you that the electric field at this particular point is zero. What that means is that the, and what I'll do is I'll draw the lines again. So this, let's, let's pretend that this is going to be Q1, okay, Q1. The vector pointing to the left will then be Q2, okay. I'm not drawing that to scale, obviously, it's just that I don't have enough space. So we know that the electric, why am I doing Q? It's E, what the heck am I doing? It's E, right? Just seeing if you're paying attention. E sub one, and then this will be E sub two. All right, so what I realize is that when I take E sub one, I'm gonna take pointing to the right to be positive, then pointing to the left has to be negative. So E sub one minus E sub two, right? The electric field produced by charge number two should be what, equal to what? Well, equal to zero, because that's what they're telling us, right? It says, what can you say about the charges if the electric field one-fourth of the way, blah, 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 is zero? So the net elect electric field is zero. So when I sum these two vectors up, it better be zero. Okay. So now, I also know that this point here, right, has to be one-fourth of the way away from Q1. So I basically know that if this whole thing, I call this whole thing R, then I know, let me just erase that for a second, right? Then I know that the distance between Q1 and the red point is going to be one-fourth of R, right? And then what would be the remaining distance? Well, we can do that as three, I mean, you could think about this in a couple ways. Three-fourths of R, right? It could be one minus one-fourth of R, which would be similar to what we've done in the last problem, but then you realize, well, we could basically just, you know, well, it wouldn't be one, it'd be R minus one fourth R. And then we can, you know, there's a one in front of there, and et cetera. So it really becomes just three fourths R. All right, so that's cool. Okay, so now why don't we start plugging in stuff that we know? So you have to think about, well, what relates electric field to the charges? And two things, right? Either we're going to use the formula E is equal to KQ over R squared. We're going to use the formula E equals to F over Q. But we also have this item of, Distance, right? So only one of them incorporates charge and distance. That's going to be this, the first one I, I identified. So let's just substitute that on in for each of the E's, right? So it's going to be K multiplied by now Q sub 1 all divided by R sub 1 squared minus then K times Q sub 2 all over R sub 2 squared. And that's all equal to zero. What do we notice now? Why don't we just move this piece? I hate dealing with negatives, right? Don't you? So why don't we just move that on over to the other side? Q sub 1 over R1 squared is going to be equal to K Q sub 2 over R2 squared. Okay? And what do we realize now with the Ks at least? The Ks go bye-bye. Right? So what I'm left with now is I'm left with Q1 all over uh, R1 squared is going to be equal to Q2 over now R2 squared. So why don't I plug in some stuff that I know? Well, you might say, I don't know. Well, we don't know too much, but we, we know these relative distances. So why don't we start plugging them in for the R's, okay? 
So it's going to be Q1 all over R1. And we said R1 is going to be 1 fourth R, right? Okay, so 1 fourth R, and let's square that. And that's then going to be equal to Q2 all over R2, which is 3 fourths R squared, right? So what do we have now? So let's just, you know, square it on out. So this is going to be 1 16th R squared, and that's going to be equal to Q2 all over then 9 sixteenths r squared. What do you notice about the r squareds? Well, they're both in common amongst the sides and we can just cancel them. So now we might be getting somewhere, okay? So now somehow this thing turned into a two <laughs> from a one. Again, I'm just seeing, I'm testing you guys. So how many mistakes can you catch me in, in this problem, right? That's what I'm trying to test you on. Um, so basically now we realize that this will work out to just be q1 over 1 16th is going to be equal to Q2 over 9 sixteenths. So now, when they ask us, what can you say about Q1 and Q2? What they're essentially trying to ask you is, you know, create a ratio from, uh, you know, relative of Q1 relative to Q2 or Q2 relative to Q1. They don't give us any information about how to look at it. So you're free to choose whatever way you want, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to choose the way to talk about Q1 relative to q2. In other words, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to solve this equation for q1 over q2. I'm creating a ratio. So basically all we got to do is bring this term on across, bring this term on across, and look, you just solve for it, right? Look at that. So easy peasy, okay? So now I realize that here's my little ratio, but this doesn't look too nice, right? You got a fraction over a fraction. I mean, who the heck likes to deal with that? So what we're going to do is I'm going to now simplify the right-hand side. So I'm going to take my 1 16th, the numerator, and remember, you can multiply it by the reciprocal of the denominator. Whenever you divide a fraction into some value, you can. it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So that's going to be multiplied by 16 over 9. And look, 16s go what? They go bye-bye, right? See you later. And what we realize now is we have this nice little relationship of 1 over 9. So basically, Q1 relative to Q2 will be 1 ninth. Or in other words, in other words, the value of Q1 should be, it, it, or uh, let me state it this way because it makes a little more sense. The value of Q2 should be 9 times larger than the value of Q1. That's what it means. So... If this particular point is going to lie uh, one fourth of the way from Q1, then I know that whatever, you know, I then I know that Q1 can be equal to some value, we'll call it x, and then Q2 has to be equal to nine times that same value. So plug in a one here, and this, if that's one, then this is nine. If this is two, then this is 18, right, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's basically what I can say. Right. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. Hit that like button and tell your friends. All right. We'll see you soon. Take care.